I have a question from a striver to answer today and that question as I blind my eyes here is how can I deal with life basically how can I deal with life and how can I deal with my feelings and my thoughts without wine well the first thing that I want to say is I don't drink wine to deal with my thoughts and feelings and I won't be alone in a world um, which means that is doable right so from a starting point straight out of the gate we know that you have the capability within you to deal with life without wine because other people of flesh and blood the same neurological connections as you manage to do that on a daily basis and even more importantly at one time in your life for many 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 years you manage to deal with your thoughts and feelings without wine you know how to do it all the memories of how you once did it how you once dealt with all the anxieties of life without wine are inside your mind they're there in your brain because at one point they were memories wrote memories part of your subconscious you didn't even have to think about it when when you were younger and something bad happened in your life you didn't have to think to yourself wow how am I gonna handle this right now and then pull out a menu of different ways of handling which included wine you just dealt with it because your body mother nature knew how to do it so in order for you to learn how to deal with life without wine you need to plug back into those old thought processes. you need to dig them out again I think it's really important to understand that what we focus on what we bring our awareness towards is where our energy will go so if we believe that wine is the elixir of life and the, the solver of all our problems then that is where our energy goes. When we have a problem, our energy will go towards wine as a solution. Now, what we need to do is we need to divert that energy somewhere else. So the first thing that I would do if I was you is I would take up some form of meditation, mindfulness practice, or some other creative endeavor such as painting, colouring, anything that enables you to focus your attention on one thing, get into the zone with that one thing, to quiet all the other areas of your mind. So I believe that at the moment you may use wine to deal with an anxious um, incident that's happened in your life. I believe you can train yourself to deal with that anxiety by getting a kid's colouring book out with your felt tips and start coloring in a dinosaur I really do believe that because that task in itself allows you to move into a new state of being okay you don't have to be stuck with this personality that says I can't deal with life I need to drink alcohol you can actually use that focus for you to start living more of your life in your conscious mind rather than what you're doing at the moment which is allowing your subconscious mind to influence your body to take control of your actions okay so each time for example you uh, want to drink wine that is your body taking control of your mind and saying to yourself right I got a problem here I now need to drink wine like pretty pronto to sort this problem out so I think that is super important it's also important to recognize the difference between short-term pleasure and long-term pleasure okay uh, in thinking that wine is solving our issues and providing us with a value it's not if we develop long-term thinking and we should all be trying to think more long-term okay short-term instant gratification is not the game we're in when it comes to the truth about alcohol philosophy because it's proven that if we if we think long term and we're able to train ourselves to do that 
then we are much more likely to become someone who doesn't drink alcohol. It goes all the way back to the old marshmallow test with the kid. I'm always saying to Zia, my daughter, she's always saying, I want to watch a video, I want to do this, I want to do that. And I'm always going, no, 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 Zia, you need to be patient. Take your time because I know that the results show that as children, if we're able to resist instant gratification, that as we get older, um, we become more intelligent, um, we become, we grow in all areas of life much more than the kids who take those marshmallows. So if that happens when we're a kid, why can't that happen when we're 30, 40, 50? Why can't we change that now? Well, we can. So whenever you think that wine is gonna be the solver of your problem, like I said to you, with a short-term mindset, instant gratification mindset, all the energy will be pushed onto the need for wine which removes the energy that you need to focus on the problem of why can't I deal with anxiety and stress without wine, all right? Because ultimately, the solution here is that. That is figuring out the root cause of why you're feeling anxious and stressed and learning tools to deal with it. Not to remove it, to lessen it maybe, like, yeah, we'd like to turn the volume down on our pain and suffering, but we need to experience it. Like, if you're ever gonna grow in life, you're gonna have to experience pain and suffering. I mean, that's, that's how it works. That's life. So, you cannot focus on finding the root cause of why you're stressed and anxious and figuring out how you're gonna deal with that without wine if your focus is always on wine. So how do you get your focus on wine? Well, funnily enough, you have to focus on wine. <laughs> you have to join a group like Strive or Alcoholics Anonymous or This Naked Mind and you need to start working on understanding more about alcohol, more about addiction and more about how it works. At the same time that you focus your energy on that, also focus your energy on health. What does it mean to be a healthy person? What should you be eating? What should you be drinking? How you should be exercising? Listening to podcasts by people like Ben Greenfield, um, uh, for example, really educating yourself on health. Because if you can start learning more about what it means to have a healthy body and a healthy mindset, then that is where your energy will be focused on. So when we are drifting around the world, like 95% of the time when we're stuck in our subconscious mode of thinking, then your subconscious will be thinking about the things that I'm telling you, about the things that Ben Greenfield's telling you, about the things that Tim Ferriss is telling you, that Dave Asprey is telling you, uh, uh, Michelle Obama, uh, Oprah Winfrey, whoever you take, use as a mentor to be a positive mentor towards you, okay? That is really important. We need to focus on this stuff. So, you know, on January the 1st, we're gonna be taking our taster again. 27 days where you get to feel what it's like to not drink alcohol. And then make a decision beyond that point about whether you want that to be permanent. Do that, take it. If you feel that paying money for something like that is not something you wanna do, then I think Annie Grace has a free um, monthly program that you can try. Go and check her out. But do something, like get involved in something. Um, asking questions and listening to the answers is one thing, but the most important thing is to take action beyond that point. So I hope that helped. If you've got any more questions, um, please let me know. Um, the the user's name here is Anonymous, but, she, but she, she'll know who she is when she hears this uh, podcast episode. Just email me if you've got any questions on this further. And um, yeah, my name is Lee Davy. I'm not an alcoholic, I refuse to be anonymous. I'm someone who doesn't drink alcohol um, or wine. Uh, and I spend every moment of my life helping other people do the same like right now. Take care.